Hi, my name is Cindy Needham, and this is my updated video on how to use the Circle and Square Ultimate Stencils. I've been using this grid system for many, many years while I've designed stencils for quilting creations. I have a circle, and I have square grids on my drafting table. I've got it covered with vinyl, and I go in with my uh, dry erase marker and use all the different lines, the angles, to make sure that my designs are symmetrical and everything is lined up. A couple of years, uh, this is what the stencils look like, full size. So we've got the circle, we've got the square, and then I've added the transparencies. The transparencies are out of the film that you get from like an overhead projector and I've had the grids printed directly on here. You can see that I've got an orange border to the transparencies. This is brightly colored masking tape. We use these transparencies, we put it on top of our quilt top, mark and draft the design that we want to use. The orange tape is ensuring that you don't mark off of the transparency onto your quilt. Ask me why I tell you to do this. So my video is going to demonstrate how we lay the transparency on your quilt top, draft it, and then transfer that design for real onto your quilt top with your quilt marking pen. So here's our transparency. I've laid it on top of my quilt block. And I recommend, when you're learning to draft with the Ultimate Stencil, keep it easy. Start with an eight-pointed star, and then we can take it from there. It's up to you to decide whether your star has little bottoms, big tops. It's up to you. You are the boss of your star. I also recommend, because all of these lines gives people hives sometimes, because it's a lot of information. So when you've determined how big you want your star to be, the simple act of just drawing a line around how far out you want your star to go kind of calms people down. I recommend you start drafting any design from the middle and you work your way out. So I'm going to have the middle of my star, let's say go from here, and I'm going to draft this, draw this all the way down to here. Skip a line, and this is going to be my next line going all the way through. And treat this as a sandbox. I mean, we're playing here. If you don't like a line, you can wipe it off. It goes away. There's no harm done. Just in, let yourself enjoy this. Okay, here's my next line. It's this one right here. And then I'm going to bring this one right up here. So now I've got the spokes of my star. Now I want to do the points. That's what these tweener lines are for. So I'm going to connect my dots. And see, I'm able to draft a perfect eight-pointed star in a matter of moments. There's no stress here, no math. There's my middle. Okay, and then we're going to come up here. Voila, I have a star. So if you've decided, well, maybe I want to add something else, that looks pretty good, but I want to do something else, why not add some little mini me's in the middle, some little baby stars? Or we can start adding more star points out here. Just start playing. Uh, when I do this in my Ultimate Stencil class, I don't have anybody that ends up with an eight-pointed star. They, everybody starts playing, messing around, erasing until they come up with a design they're happy with. So let's say you're happy with this and I'm ready to transfer the design onto my quilt top. This is where you take your ultimate stencil and you're going to lay it down on your quilt top. And then we're going to transfer the design from there. But I want to give you a tip that we do a lot in my class. 
you don't absolutely have to use the ultimate stencil. Many people have taken the transparency that they've drawn on and they put it on a light table. Turn it upside down so that the dry erase marker is facing the table. Put your quilt top on top of it and then retrace the design with your ruler so you get nice straight lines and that way you don't have to use the stencil. So I just want to let you know it's an option. Try that light table. Lots and lots of my students are doing that. But if you want to use the ultimate stencil, lay it on your quilt top and with your quilt marking pen, not the dry erase marker that I'm showing here, you're going to count your lines out and you go, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So we can, because those lines are there, and I'm just going to, I'm not on the clock today. I'm going to draw this whole thing out for you. Do de do goes up here. This one goes here. And remember, this is the stencil on top of your quilt using your quilt marking pen. You will hate me if you use your dry erase marker. All right, so we've got the middle of our star. Here's our tweener lines. Now you can draw a dot where your star points are going to go. Do, do, do. And then here's this one. So now you're going to lift up your stencil and with your ruler, you're connecting your dots. And here's your eight pointed star exactly the way you drafted it on your transparency. De do, de do, de do, voila, we have our eight pointed star. So if you're a long armor, or actually even with a domestic machine, you don't have to draw these lines. There's some fabulous rulers out there. All you would have to do is draw the dots, line up your ruler, and then just stitch it down. It just depends on how much marking that you actually want to do. So this is what, what your star may look like. And this is using the Circle Ultimate Stencil. Repetitive lines. Here's my rope cable border from the Ultimate Borders that goes underneath the medallion to give you a little bit of dimension. Uh, Hobbs Tuscany wool batting, and this is Superior Threads buttonhole silk and kimono silk. All right. We've already talked a little bit about adding extra details. You can add as many or as few as you want. Here's the Mariner's Compass where I added extra points. I love this one. I think this one came out great. Okay. Let's say you want to enlarge a design. I've done 360 inch medallions using that shape, that size of the ultimate stencil. You're going to draw it. Let's say if you want to make it 20 inches bigger or even an inch bigger. Draw your outside circle. In my case, I can only go out another inch. So I'm going to find the one inch mark on my ruler and I'm going to draw a dash. Line it up, draw a dash. And you're going to do that all the way around so now you have a perfect circle exactly the size that you want it. Now take your ruler line up those angles and trace them out as far as you want them to go. So now you have the angles that you can use for designing. The one problem with going out further is your lines are going to get further apart. So you're going to have more space to fill. So you need to add more angles. Oops, I skipped ahead of myself. These are the extra designs that I added as I went out further. If you find that you need to add more angles, there's an easy way of doing it. So this is with the circle. I recommend that you measure between two angles. Find your halfway point and draw a dot. Take your stencil, line it up, and rotate it. Voila, 
there's your extra angles. So you're just going to repeat. And this is what our extra angles will look like. And this is what I can create from that. And this is just using the ultimate stencil. Okay, so with the square, it's a little bit different because we have two different widths of angles. This one's a little bit wider, this one's a little bit narrower. I recommend that you measure the distance between your angles. You find your halfway point, mark a dot, then take your ruler and line it up, and then you're going to have your extra angles as far out as you want to go. And then we can create a, a busy, crazy Mariner's Compass like this. So, if you want the free ebook that goes with these, I'd be very happy to send those to you. Go to my website, email me from my website, and I'd be more than happy to send you that book by email. And as always, you can always email me and ask me any questions. That's what I'm here for. Thank you.